There are two ways of uh, thinking of a robot. One is the science fiction robot. It's a science fiction robot because it looks like us, behaves like us, and does things like us. It's the robot who actually drives the car because it has a body like ours and can drive from here to there because it reasons like us, he has our skills. That is, as I said, science fiction. Then there's the other robot, the robot that doesn't look like us, doesn't think like us, doesn't behave like us, but it can actually drive the car from here to there because there's plenty of information, maps, sensors, satellite, and controls of all kinds, together with algorithms and databases, that make sure that the particular journey is successful. That is the robot that's going to be successful in the future, because we are enveloping the world around its very simple abilities. We saw in the other video uh, how time is changing in terms of hyperhistory. I'd like to tell you something about how our conception of space is changing. Uh, and therefore in terms of uh, how environment is being shaped today. This has got to do with the success of artificial intelligence, AI, or as I rather would call it, smart technologies. Suppose we want to summarize the history of uh, AI in the past 60 years or so. It would uh, look something like this. You have on the one end AI as part of the engineering department. This means that it doesn't matter whether there's really AI. What it matters is that it does a good job. The joke is, don't ask whether a submarine can actually swim as long as it does what it's supposed to do. Is it really swimming or not? That's not the issue. Or you could have AI as part of the cognitive science department. At this point, it is not about the job, it's about the known biological implementation of intelligence. Maybe it's just a little bit of intelligence and it's not as intelligent as your dog, but it would be an enormous success if you were intelligent at all. Now, this has been a great success. This has been a complete disaster. We have no intelligence whatsoever to speak in terms of AI today as you would expect it from a cognitive science perspective. But we have amazing smart machines. In terms of engineering, the sky's the limit. There are more and more machines, more and more computers of all kinds doing things that we thought were impossible just yesterday. So what's the explanation? Well, the explanation is something that I would like to call enveloping the world. The term comes from uh, uh, robotics and it's quite simple. The best thing to do is to introduce it with an analogy. You have several robots in your kitchen. They're called dishwasher, uh, fridge, and so on. Now, a dishwasher does exactly what happens in an industrial building. You build a whole world around a very simple gadget inside. What you do is to transform a whole environment into something that is friendly to the very stupid little robot inside who goes no choo 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 chunk with a little bit of soap for a long time. Nobody in his right mind, certainly not me, would wash the dishes the way a dishwasher does it. Don't even try this at home. You have your agent here, which is quite stupid, and you have a complex environment here. Instead of trying to make the agent adapt to the environment, you make the environment friendly to the stupid agent. You build a whole box around some uh, turning bits and a bit of soap, or you make sure that there are enough elements in the environment so that your car can drive from here to there without you uh, being in charge. Drones can fly uh, all over the place without having a pilot on board. Your uh, smartphone can communicate with a smart device without you having to constantly intervene. In other words, we are enveloping the world to make sure that the uh, agent, stupid, can work there. An envelope in robotics is the 3D space within which an industrial robot can operate successfully. For example, uh, building a car, nailing something, or soldering something else. So this is the idea that we are transforming the environment into an AI-friendly environment by enveloping it around the agent in question. A long time ago, say in the late 40s, in the 50s, uh, grandma used to 
walk inside the computer. She had to change the program using a screwdriver. Now her daughter walked out of the computer. She started, at least since the 70s, to sit in front of the computer. And uh, programming or interacting with the computer was a text-based idea. Some of you will even remember DOS. A generation later, we are back to a mix between the two. Now, interacting with a computer has become, again, something that you do with your hands, a little bit like grandma used to do it with a screwdriver. But at the same time, you are inside the computer again. The computer is around you, and uh, whenever you walk from home to the office through Starbucks, you are connected 24-7 aims to pick up the component in the centre but there's no guarantee it's going to pick up a component exactly in the centre. Access to those kind of infrastructures and you can uh, hack into uh, those infrastructures in such a way as to uh, disrupt uh, anything that is normal life in a particular country. 